word. Welcome to the B-Side Word, everybody. We have a full house today. Woo, 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 woo. Woo, 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 woo. I'm Emma and I'm sat here with... Devon. And... DJ. And... Maxi. And... AJ. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And we are a group of friends from around the world who discuss interesting articles week in, week out. Let's go. Unless someone's ill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first article this week is Yeezy, of course. We always like to bring in a bit of Yeezy, don't we? And his new reinvention of the croc. Although I don't think that's what he's calling it, but that's what other people are calling it. Crocking hell. <laughs> croc? Yes, the croc. Get the croc out of here. Those <laughs> foam shoes with holes. Oh, okay. Crocs. Okay. Yeezy crocs. Yeah. So I think he's calling them, what, foam runners? Yeah. Something like that. And Yeezy cr- foam runners landed in 2020. Yeah. That's what Catch your name. So they've got like a similar <laughs> shape to his trainers, but they're just got holes in them. Crocs, I guess. But would you wear those? <laughs> they're ugly. We'll post a pic. <laughs> we'll post a pic for everyone listening. But would you wear those guys? I wouldn't wear. Oh, I don't. Would you wear Crocs? You don't have any. I don't I have, have any. any Crocs. A Crocs are comfortable. Crocs are comfortable. Crocs are like a must-have if you have children. All of our kids have had Crocs. I know chefs wear Crocs. Yes, they do. Whoa. And chefs this is what crocs. has confused yeah. me. So do the knives not go through? No, no, they go through, babe. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> they just had not to drop knives on their feet. That's what they try and avoid. <laughs> yeah, they, they try not to drop the knife. I don't know why. If someone is a, a chef, why do you wear Crocs? I, I was wondering. I think because they're on their feet all day and they're yeah. really lightweight. So... So have a cashier register, like people, cashier, should Chefs they work longer hours? I need to give this advice to my barber because he's been having, he's uh, got plantar fasciitis because he stands on his feet all day. So what is that? That, that, is, that is that is when yeah. the muscle in between your f- toes and your heel develops scarring, which means when you start walking, it starts to, um feels like it's being torn apart. <gasps> Uh, so you see that? Wow. Did you, read, did you read that straight from a Google definition? No, literally no. CJ head. came up like, like, bang. Like yeah, I've had, like had it. I've had it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. And it hurts. <laughs> oh. So, so the, yeah. sorry, the muscle between your toe and your heel, like underneath yeah. your foot? or Yeah, it's like strips, right? Like The way they explain it is like elastic band, right? And mm. after you yeah. get like, these micro tears and the scars, you have to try to um, get the, get the um, scarring out. So you have to get like a beer bottle with a foot on it and to get all the scarring out. Or a beer bottle. bottle. Yeah. I used <laughs> the beer bottle. Be a beer bottle. Yeah. Oh, I think it's just anything curved. Everything, right? anything curved. But <laughs> yeah. the, I, I like the beer bottle because it was, it was hard. It was firm. <laughs> and it, yeah. so Beer of choice was? I think it was a VB. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, so so like, imagine, nice. imagine the bottom of your foot being just like super tight. Like when you walk like through where the arch is and everything. Yeah. As you walk. That that's, would be horrible. Well, mm. tell him to get some Crocs. Uh, tell him yeah. to get some Yeezy or, or tell him to get foam a, runners. Tell him to get a beer bottle. Oh, yeah. Or a beer that. bottle. And then... He's got, the, um, he's got one of those rolly balls with spikes on it now. Yeah. 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 I'll go one of them too. So back, I, I prefer the beer bottle. Back to these uh, Yeezy Crocs. Okay, um, we shouldn't probably call them Yeezy Crocs. Oh, they're not Yeezy Crocs. They no, are. I think we should call them Yeezy Crocs. All right, Yeezy Crocs. <laughs> I think are. we should call them Fugly. <laughs> they aren't exactly that attractive. However, I imagine they're super comfortable. They do look very comfortable. Can we, can we just I, change? Can we change the narrative here, right? Can mm. we? How did? How does uh, Kanye come up with that? Like Kanye loves comfy. Okay, okay. He saw Crocs, right? And he <laughs> goes, "I want to make some money of that kind of product. I'm going to steal it." And um, make it into my shoes. Yeah, but didn't you guys see those sandals he like was wearing? Nine hundred dollars for it. <laughs> do, do, do we know the cost? The, the cost of these, or did not say yet? No, but they are luxury, so they. I guess they're going to be quite expensive. Uh, it's always it, with things like that. It's worth just trying to get there just for the resale value. Imagine mm. a very easy Crocs resale mm. twenty twenty. Oh my god! Just a sidetrack. Have you seen this guy? The model. 
Yeah. Okay, so this is yeah. what I was thinking. He looks like right? the barge. Who? The barge. Who's that? Um I was an old eighty like eighties musical group. Oh, oh the barge. Yeah, no, yeah, that name's ringing a bell. Yeah. But, but except for his hair's longer. He's got beautiful hair, by the way. Oh. But this is what I was gonna say. Luscious. If it was a different model, all right, let's put someone else in his place. Uh me. Just <laughs> old, older, an old guy. Yeah. Uh um, David Letterman. <laughs> yeah, and he was wearing those. Are yeah. they going to sell? Or is it on this model that you're like, yeah, yeah. No, the model's not selling the shoes for me. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the model's definitely not selling the shoes like, for me. Like, the model could sell a conditioner, but no <laughs> shoes. So, I, <clears throat> with, with the picture as well, and I'm, I'm a bit weird, but I noticed it. If you zoom into the actual shoe, so I wanted to have a look at it. You notice it's way too big for the model's foot. Yeah, yes. oh, I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. It's Even massive. the girl's one's too big for her. Why do they do that? They do that with actual like runway models too sometimes. If you mm. zoom in enough as well, I think it says Primark on the back. <laughs> <laughs> but it's I don't I, know. It's crazy. They're saying they're suggesting some Twitter suggests it's going to be three hundred and eighty dollars. Someone like four hundred and twenty-eight dollars. Oh, wow. Someone uh, wrote. But okay, well, I, don't know I how guess they got to that number. If you Let's can't afford a pair of Yeezys, maybe this is your consolation prize. Really? So if you can't afford a pair of ugly shoes, you can get a different pair of ugly shoes. I don't find all Yeezys ugly. I actually like some of them. What percentage? Like I haven't seen them all, but let's say 80. <laughs> you like 80%. <laughs> I point. actually would quite like a I would quite like a pair. Oh, you would quite like a pair of Yeezys. Yeah, yeah, I think so. If someone Are gave me a pair, I'll be just, I'll just trying to sell them. Adidas in that. Huh? Yes. Like, I've seen that, yeah. Well, like Adidas have like their own version that look exactly the same. That's not fly neat, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have seen that, yeah. It's not the fly neat. No, I think, I think all of them, like all the different brands have a pair. That it's like a style. wider base, isn't it? And then it's got yeah. hollow in the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dennis, I just don't like the look of them. No. I wouldn't want to get those because then they're clearly not Yeezys. So this is the thing, right? I am very not brand conscious. However, with cer- like certain brands, like only certain ones, it's like, uh, would you really? What like brands? with knockoff Converse, it's like. Knockoff Converse? What are they called? Converse are so yeah, cheap. Well. Exactly. But let's just say, no, but I'm saying with certain brands. So <laughs> Converse, I probably wouldn't get the cheap one. I'd just get the Connie's. Yeah. Well, they're not that expensive. But I'm just saying, Yeezys, I wouldn't get the cheap ones i'd just get the easy uh, to be fair have you got any the, yeah. no it's not gonna happen <laughs> the nike ones the nike ones aren't that cheap or the adidas ones aren't that cheap yeah they're not yeah they're not you've got I the don't... adidas ones are probably the exact same shoe because easy is adidas yeah. yes true um i would get adidas and not k-swiss like i wouldn't get the four lines <laughs> K-Swiss is its own thing. I know. I'm joking. I'm joking. What do you mean? K-Swiss. I was joking because it's got four (laughs) lines, not three. No, but K-Swiss is a is a brand. It's it's a. But it's not exactly very popular. Yeah. Back Back in the day, it was, but not now. Yeah. We uh, CJ. How many how many K-Swiss? Three um, pairs. New Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. He's got his own K-Swiss. Yeah. What? Is it is it K-Swiss that he's using the same brand or has he got a whole new brand? He's using K-Swiss. K Swiss. And he's like yeah. relaunching it. He made, made he made like he, he he was big on people like buying it and then reselling it on eBay. Mm. He goes, buy my shoes and then resell it. Ooh. And people were like buying it for I don't know, the original price, I don't know, was like ninety nine bucks or whatever. And then and then he, he was re uh, the people were reselling it for a thousand dollars because they're like limited edition vein. But all those older brands that w- which were really popular are like starting to make a comeback. Like Kappa, like Champion. Selling yes. for like over a hundred bucks yeah. for a t shirt or jumper or whatever. Stuff that. When I bought this for $20. Dev's <laughs> sister was like, oh my God, when did but you get that? He's like, I've had it for about 10 15 years. years. <laughs> I got it when they were like selling it two for 15. <laughs> I, 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 I think you went out to, to the club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now they're like super duper expensive. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 They're like they're really expensive just for just like I don't know, just yeah, a t-shirt. That was only just for a period. Wow. Last year. Yeah, last this year. Last year was like a hundred. You walk into any footlocker and you can get like half of the 
Queens and they're a champion. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, I mean, next time, have a look. Yeah. See if they've gone up in price over there. Because over here, they did. Fila. Fila. Kappa is coming back. Yeah, but Kappa. there's like, um, these brands have like more than one range of their brands. Yeah. So they have like the one which is crazy amount. Like they produce a load of them and they are super cheap. Um, and sport, you know, Sports Direct. Do you know that over yes. there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Sports Direct have done a thing where they took brands which were good, and you'll see a lot of them, like, they've done it to Levi's, and they went to a few brands where they bought, the like, a share of the brand, and then they just produced, like, a load of, like, clothes, because that's what they do, right? They just sell loads to the masses. And then, like, the value of each item went down crazy, but then that brand then tries to recreate themselves by then saying, okay, now we're going to do limited edition, and it's, like, our exclusive line, and then people then start paying over the odds for that one. But the problem is, like, mm. to, for me and you, we probably won't know the difference between the exclusive no. and the, you know, the no. one they sell to no. the masses. But the people that wear yeah. the exclusive ones do know. Yeah, well, they're like, they're like, maybe, please like, ask me where yeah. I got my T-shirt from because this is exclusive. It's like, this, edition, it's like um, the sneaker, the shoes, like how did the industry is like when you have a pair of Jordans or whatever. And then, like, it's worth um, $5,000 for a pair of Jordans, a limited edition one. Yeah. And you go, uh, you don't even wear it, bro. Like it's still in the plastic. What are you? Well, what do you take it out because it won't be worth as much then? No, so, I don't. I don't understand it though. What's the point? Confession, yeah. confession from a basketball player, lifetime basketball player with Jordans. I don't. I don't. I can't tell the difference between speculation and all that. I, I there's so many come out like, oh, the Jordan Elevens are coming out. And they're like this. I'm like. Didn't think <laughs> like a year ago and the year before that and the year before that and every year. <laughs> but it's yeah. like it's not it's not aimed at basketball players. That's the weird thing now, right? These aren't aimed at yeah, like Yeah, that's true. That's true. They're aimed at this weird niche of people. Uh, I'm not saying they're weird, it's weird in the sense that it exists. People that just like really enjoy it's like buying and selling, like the same as art. Like people just buy and sell art. Like who decides yeah. that yeah. this sneaker's the most expensive? I watched a prank video of this old like man, I think. Like he pretended he had these shoes, which um, his grandson got him and he didn't like them and he wanted to return them. And he was like, do you know how much they cost? And like, can he trade them? And there are these like Nike, I don't know if they're Jordans, they're like basketball shoes anyway. And they co- they were worth like $20,000. And the guys oh. in the shops were like, oh, what? And then some of them tried to mug him off. Some some of them were trying to be like, oh yeah, they're worth like $500. That's a lot of money, man. And tried to like take off his hands for $500. <gasps> And others were like, no. these are worth a lot of money. Like, you, you need to be careful of these. You can't just walk around with them in your hands like this. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Well, uh, guess who collects handbags? Drake. I was oh. about to bring it up. Drake, 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 Drake. New rule. If you know the answer, you can't shout out. Why ask a question? It's like to the students. Exactly. No calling out. You, you can't go, all right, do you know this? <laughs> and everyone goes, no. You have to be quiet because everyone knows. <laughs> Because <laughs> I was about to say that. Because uh, yeah, Drake collects handbags. Because they go up in value. They don't lose their value. What? They hold their value. Yeah, but they hold a lot of things like wallets, mobiles. <laughs> 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 That's the joke of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, last question: What do you? Yes, yay or nay on the Yeezy Crocs? Nay. If someone nay. wants to buy them for me, yay. But I'm not buying them. Nay. Who's gonna buy them for you? Nah, Don't I'm know. not buying them. Nah, Count no. Me out. All right. If you saw someone on a train wearing a hat with an elect, is it an electric strip going across? LED, the front? An LED, LED strip. LED strip going across the front of the hat, saying "Wake me up before I go go past 34th Street." Would you actually wake him up? I would. Yes. <laughs> I doubt he would. I would steal his hat. Definitely. You would <laughs> steal his hat? Siege. Oh, the worst. <laughs> because you know what? If you saw someone with that hat and it literally gave you an instruction and you didn't follow the instruction, you'd feel so guilty <laughs> if they woke up after their stop. You wouldn't be able to look them in the eye. You just look. I'd pretend to be asleep myself. <laughs> how, how, how many times have you been like that on a train after work? Never. You've never been tired after work? I've never fallen asleep on a train. A lot. So you've fallen asleep on a train. You're obviously not working that hard at at work that you're like, (laughs) yeah, no worries. What, I literally (laughs) fall asleep on the train? Yeah, I have. But to be fair, have you ever got the train home after work? Yeah, I used to when I worked in the city, but nah. After a few drinks uh, (laughs) working in the city, 
I'll put him to sleep on the train. Yeah. No. I'm scared to miss my stop. That's, I have. That's why you, I need the hat. That's why you need <laughs> the hat. <laughs> <laughs> but I have heard of people literally going to the end of the line and like, oh, no, mm. I fell asleep. And Not it's like the end of the line, the, the terminal, Sydney Terminal. Oh, where's People that? have ended at Sydney Terminal. You know where they park the, the Yeah, that's train? what I mean. Full end of the line. Not, like the, not the end of the line. Oh, well, not the end of the in normal the, line. In the, the depot. In the depot. Like Thomas's house. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas is sat next to him. <laughs> <laughs> the fat controller. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. man. That would be freaky. <laughs> that's like the lady that got trapped on the aeroplane. And woke up and like there was no one on the airplane and she had to try and open the emergency door and she was like, her legs were just dangling out the door because she couldn't get down. <laughs> I don't what? understand how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> when did... I saw that recently. What? That was a whole story in itself. I know. I know. I saw That's that. way better than this article. <laughs> <laughs> Next week we're talking about that one. <laughs> So, my article this week yeah. is about um, electric car, an electric car. Which one? This car is quite special. Okay. I think. Mm. Because they are trying, Toyota is trying to make this electric car plugless. Say so what now? <laughs> <laughs> so, you don't have to recharge it. Mm-hmm with an outlet, but have solar panels on the car so that it's charging while you're driving. Get out of here. I'm telling you, I swear. Yeah. Oh, you're lying. Get I out swear. Of town. What happens if it's like uh, um, overcast? There's no sun. I think you still have the yeah. chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you still have a chance to plug it in. But nah, you, said no plug. It, you said no plug. <laughs> you said no plug. You said no plug. I just say the performance drops off quickly if it's cloudy. Oh, yeah. Performance. Or oh, even really? when it's too hot. What was the new need for speed oh, movies? They have to stop production because it's raining. It'll be fast and furious. Unless it's rainy. <laughs> <laughs> but it says on a good day of charge, the car can then travel to 56 kilometers, which is 35 miles. Hold on, on a good day? That's not yeah. very far. And you bearing so... in mind, an American on <laughs> average, an American on average drives forty-seven kilometers a day, which is within a good day. So on good days, Americans are good. The average and lower American in terms of driving. But uh, Aaron, you might need to pick I me up you, from the road. When you think about the average, it's probably an average of all the people who commute, which is more than that, versus all the people who commute maybe like a kilometer or something. Mm. Like, yeah. I bet you there's a fair amount of people that fall above that. So 56, cl- that is nothing. Yeah. yeah. 50%, I'd imagine. I guess it's, uh, but but realistically as well, this is today. In five years' time, it will be yeah. completely yeah. different. It like, could be a hundred. Sure. I'm actually very <laughs> impressed that I, they can do a yeah, day I'm impressed. on solar powers on the cars and then get it to go 56 kilometers. Like, I'm really impressed. And they said at the moment, the solar panel is probably about a centimeter thick, but it should really be a bit a bit less it should be like millimeters but it's it's like but a do, they, do they set it into the the roof so that it doesn't protrude up oh i don't or know or they literally just slapped it on top at the moment it I looks, it looks kind of slap oh no it, no it's in the roof it's in the roof like the you can see it on the, it's like the back window which is have you seen it on a prius it kind of is angled upwards anyway like it's not a flat back do you know what i mean like yeah. it's uh it looks like it's leaning into the roof and oh, on the roof, yeah, it's all yeah, solar yeah. panels, and on the on the bonnet, it is all solar panels. This is this is like I was going to say. Can't they develop it right that it gets the energy from the sun, but then as it's driving, it create more electricity. That's creates probably where they by driving. Yeah, because aren't they moving parts still? They'll be um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> You're an electrician. I'm not. The <laughs> it's totally <laughs> different. That is two like different things. <laughs> I don't know. Who's the I, ask, ask them. Okay. <laughs> ask who's, them. Who's the engineer in the group? Maxi. Okay. Uh, is, there, is there a way when a car's driving, <laughs> it can create its own um, energy, own charge? That if you can make a car create its own charge whilst driving, you've solved 
every human problem we've ever had. Wow. See, I, I, I'm thinking of things <laughs> good, that we need to solve. You've got a good mind. That's, that's great. Yeah, I, think, I think what you're thinking, <laughs> CJ, is like, um, like turbine, like windmills, but they're generated by something else. Yeah, like but the wind. wind. But like, oh, instead okay. of the wind, it'll be spinning but the inside. Car needs to be in yeah. order to move the car. You need the energy. Yes, it's but so you use the solar panels to get it going. To get it and going, then... and then the energy yeah. will build up inside so and charge like a the battery. Hybrid, a hybrid solar panel. Yeah. Perpetual motion. Yeah. Uh, the like oh, air wow. resistance is a is a basically the reason the car uses so much energy going forward anyway. So if you put a turbine oh. on top, the air resistance increases, turbine. and the amount of energy you generate from <laughs> The turbine, it will require oh. more energy from the solar panels to push it through it because no. the efficiency of the turbine will be like 40%. So that means... I, I, think, I, think, I was going to say, can't you put like the... Like um... The wheels can be like the turbine. Yeah. Because they're already turning. Yeah, I but think that's what he means. Like, we're powering the wheels to utilize... turn. We're powering yeah, the wheels that, to turn. And as the wheels are turning, yeah. they're turning and creating another current. Oh, we are turning. Okay, that's so then, a perpetual motion machine. So then, if the wheels are turning, right? Theoretically impossible. If you're, if the wheels are turning, and it's, and it's to, for it to create another current, you then have to make it go through a magnetic field. As it goes through the magnetic field, it puts a force in the opposite direction of where the wheels are going, and then it uses that energy and it makes it into a current, and then it goes and charges the batteries. So again, that force that requires to turn the wheels, then it's impossible to be able to turn the wheels at a force. Um, and then harness that force and get more energy from it. But what can happen, which is what you're talking about, is as you brake your car, and this is what happens today, as you brake the that, car, instead of braking it with normal brakes, it brakes it with the magnetic field, and then it turns it into energy, and it puts it back into the battery. Is that is that F1? The hell? Is that what the F1 does? It's called regener regenerative Regener braking. F1 do yeah. it. Uh, trains do it. Most of the new electric cars will do it. Like, it's quite a normal thing now. Yeah. I, I was just thinking, like, something of a low, low magnetic force, and as it spins... It mm. keeps it keep driving and also make a little charge, so you can actually instead of going forty miles, you can go sixty. Yeah, I don't that know. That only works when braking. I don't head. know. Basically, I don't it know. only works when braking. Did you understand what Max was saying? Yeah, it's over every my head. word. Because like when he was talking, <laughs> I was like, I uh, hope CJ knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he was saying that because of the ma magnet and the yeah. wheel spinning, yeah, you will not generate enough force to actually spin the wheel because of the magnet. Yeah. The only way you could actually do it is if the magnet comes in as it breaks. Yeah. And the, as it's breaking, it will generate force and, it's got, and be able to charge. Correct? Yeah. Okay. This is, maybe <laughs> this will be easier. Forget about um, the magnetic fields and how electricity works. If we just focus on, imagine if you're going, um, if you're going on a flat level, like flat, flat um, surface, it doesn't yep. require much energy to go. As soon as you try and put, um, like, if you try and harness any energy from the wheel, that's essentially saying, okay, now let's drive slightly uphill. And then that that's the, that's the uh, same effect it would have. Okay. If you try and take some energy from the wheel, it's like driving slightly uphill. So if you go slightly uphill, then you have to put a bit more power into the engine to get it to, get it to go up that hill. That makes sense? Yeah. So as soon as you yeah. put the... T even if you want to do the tiniest bit, if you put a tiniest bit on the wheel to take a bit of energy, you go slightly uphill. If you want to put loads on the energy, you go re up a really uh, steep hill. So as soon as you try and take any energy from anything, just imagine what you're saying to it is, I want to take some energy out of this system. That means the car now has to go slightly uphill. And it's up to you how mm -hmm. much uphill you want to make it go. But there's no point making a car go uphill because, you know, then you have to just make the engine go harder and you, you huh. lose up. Well, there you go. Still, still over my head. All I'm thinking is if you're a police officer, you'd want the criminal to choose this hybrid Prius. Because you know it's not getting very far. <laughs> you could just throw a towel over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be like, ah. Oh. All right, he's got about 30 left. No, no. <laughs> Meet him at the other side. He'd be like, there's a chase on. Get the tarps out. Just put the tarps <laughs> over, the, over the side. The tarps! <laughs> <laughs> so as he's driving under the tarps, he'd be like, oh, crap. <laughs> something we, like, I think this is a really cool idea for the future. Like, I think it's, that's probably 10 years down the line. But 10 years, it might be feasible that you can have a car which you just drive around without ever having to do anything, like fill it up. That but is so cool. Because have you seen the movie called Race the Sun? Sorry, Race the Sun? Have you seen the movie Race the Sun? No. Nah. It's like a, uh, they're like a, a group of American college students came to Australia and went to, I think, the Northern Territory. And they had this uh, vehicle, right? And you can't, you can, it, you have enough energy to start the the vehicle but after that you just have to rely on the sun yeah i remember oh. it now 
Do you remember that? I remember it. Is this an actual movie? It's a movie. It's a documentary. It's a movie. It's a movie based on a true story. It's not a very good movie, but it's a movie. But mm. it was interesting because the whole the whole vehicle was, had was, um, was, um I remember it now. Solar panels. panels yeah. And um, they pretty much had the smallest. They had all they had inside was this little fan, so that it air, like a air conditioning for the yeah. the kids inside it. And they, I think they traveled over 200, 200 kilometers, something something massive. Uh, like, and uh, all they had one was minute a, warning. And this is an old film. Yeah, it's an old film. It's, it was, a, pretty, it's a pretty bad one, so don't worry. <laughs> but like, based on this, how far we've come, like, yeah. and now they're hold on, we've come less because now you can only travel. <laughs> 50 miles when they were doing the race on the sun they were tra- they did 300 or something you said it was it was i think 200 so we've gone kilometers. back yeah <laughs> but this guy was they were only going like five kilometers an hour or something oh. <laughs> do you so remember they just, they, they could so, push so i guess the sun that, won that yeah well hey i guess the sun won the race no because they made it i guess the sun won the race anyways what was your oh, really saying now? i'm not watching that anymore <laughs> <laughs> It's quite um, tight, Maxi. You should watch it. You should enough. watch it. There was a okay. there was a big sumo at the end that made it like weight to power ratio. Sumo was a big, wrestler. No, it was a big guy. It was a big guy, <laughs> and that to take. Anyway. This whole film was sounds he, so was bizarre. He, I can't remember. Was he Asian? Yeah, I'm Hawaiian. Really Hawaiian. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember it now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This week on Max Facts. Max Facts. Max Facts. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go with this one this week. Hopefully you haven't heard of it. But do you know a very common name which Shakespeare invented? As in like a person's name? There's a person's name that we use today which was invented by Shakespeare himself. Arthur. Harry. Henry. Tyrion. What? <laughs> Tyrion. That's not a bad show. I feel like that was a. Wasn't that Game of Thrones? Yeah. <laughs> I was no, trying to think name of was... the characters. Jessica. No. What? Wow. So who was the first ever Jessica? Who uh, someone in the Shakespeare Jones play? Wow. That's pretty He's cool. Like, what sounds? He's invented a lot of words, Jessica. Yeah. Oh, the only, only one that comes to mind is assassin. I remember that. What? Assassin? Did he come up with the word yeah. assassin? Yeah, he, he invented a bunch of words, Shakespeare. No, I didn't even know there you go. this. Here's 15 words invented by Shakespeare. Huh. Go. Hit me up. Ban- bandit. I thought you were going to say banter. <laughs> bandit. Uh, critic. Huh. To have a critic. But that's French. Uh, oh, no, it's not. That's critique. Mm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dauntless. What? Mm-hmm. Dwindle. A... Oh yes, I like to dwindle. Elbow <laughs> as a verb, so to elbow someone. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, get the elbows out, M. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the expression green eyed to explain uh, or envy? describe envy, jealousy. Envy. Oh yeah. Mm. yeah. Lackluster. Oh that one. yeah, Ooh. definitely a bit lackluster today. This is an interesting one. Lonely. No. Uh, lonely. Um, skim milk. What? <laughs> Someone's what pulling you your leg. <laughs> Someone's pulling your in. leg. That is full skim cream milk. Nah. You also, a, you also a, cream. A, a full cream milk. <laughs> nah. Nah. <laughs> Coconut milk was him. Homogenized. <laughs> and then. <laughs> nah. And then, skim milk. And then this is. This is probably the this may be my favorite one of them all. Swagger. 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 Yes, Swagger's not bad. Yes, yeah. I did, yeah. You're kidding me. That's not bad. You but got skim milk. Swagger, man. <laughs> I remember that one. I think skim milk. Skim is someone's pulled up. Yeah, like, for sure. It's, someone's pulled. It's only up. fourteen words. Does that make him? A, does that make him a good playwright or a bad one? The fact that he has to make up words. No, he's amazing. No, like, he's amazing. It's like Eminem. It's like Eminem. He makes he rhymes words that don't rhyme with it, like orange. What does he say? How does he say? Remember, he was like, orange. nobody knows orange. how to. Yeah, orange. nobody knows a rhyming word for orange, and it was like bugging me, and I wanted to find one, and he found one somehow to. Rhyme I think with there's orange. a fine line though between like. <laughs> Shakespeare could have just been a crazy guy that no one gave a crap about. 
but we just decided that Shakespeare was a genius. Yeah. I feel like there's so many other geniuses and there's so many other people that probably did create words and stuff but just didn't get the exposure. Yeah. Well, and now we we just accepted that Shakespeare's a genius. I, I, yeah. I don't know. If you want to uh, dive into conspiracy theory, there's quite a good one about Shakespeare. That Which is? Actually, it was, I think it was Sir Francis Bacon was did all the work and Shakespeare was just the name that went on it. Oh. Who's Sir Francis Bacon? Kevin Bacon's hey. uncle. <laughs> just the uncle. Why is it a good conspiracy theory? I can't remember what his, I can't remember what his I, I don't remember the details at all. I remember listening to it and going, huh, oh, that's interesting and not caring. Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. It's, like, it's a good one, but it's also one I don't care about. Yeah, like yeah. most people would be like, ah, oh, I still remember Shakespeare. Yeah. Although we don't really remember him, but yeah. it's not like Shakespeare got a load of money. Didn't he become very famous after death? No, he was he was. How was he big at the time? Who oh, okay. who Love would it. you guys say is a modern day genius? Eminem. Um, what? Uh, what's his name? James Musk. Cameron. Lyrically, <laughs> who's Musk? Lyrically, Musk. Eminem. Musk or don't Lyrically. go down in history. I think, a I think Kanye is production genius. Oh yeah. He's are a, you serious? He's yeah, a you, Eminem is a lyrical lyrical genius. That's just what we've said, but he's not really, is he? Lyrical. Genius. R- rhyming. Genius. Has he made up but any then, words? But then why hasn't why why isn't uh Jay Z <laughs> then who doesn't write anything down and just spits it first time round? Okay, because you've seen Jay Z spit it first time around. I'm sure he's written it down beforehand. <laughs> I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Maybe Joe Budden. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but when because obviously the thing about genius, you could have there's loads of geniuses, but it's also geniuses with influence is what goes down yeah. as a genius in history, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I guess maybe Kanye. But could is be there one? Is there one, one genius like, that everyone sort of agrees with? I, I can't think Elon think of Musk any. would probably be the. <coughs> yeah. Oh yeah. One Elon. we should all agree on. Yeah. No. I think. Um, I would say. I think, <coughs> in some way, shape, or form, and not not one I appreciate, but Trump is a bit of a genius. Oh. What? Yeah, <laughs> he's Trump, he's getting a exactly genius. <laughs> orange like, man is a genius. Yeah. He's terms, orange. What, when I say genius, what I mean is in terms of the way he's interrupted politics. <clears throat> excuse me, interrupted politics in an extremely obvious manner, yet still getting the result that he wants. I but he I, shouldn't be. Like, I'm not no giving him the G word. The that he's yeah. aiming for. I'll give him a G word. No. Get F. Um. <laughs> uh, there you go. Okay. So, this next article is about a Japanese innovation. But I don't know if it's just Japan that does this. But anyway, Japanese innovation, which is an instant translator. So it's this little, literally, mini device that you hold in your hand, smaller than an iPod, if they exist anymore, and you press button A, speak into it what you want to ask, if you're in a sep- if you're in a foreign country, and release the button, and it will ask that question <laughs> in that language that you want. That would suck if you're in Australia and you just went from A and then pressed B as English, and just repeated what you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think you you, like, you program you your <laughs> setting. You program your setting, and then what they do. So then you hand the remote to them. They press the B <laughs> button and speak in their native language. Release, and it and it says the answer back to you in your home language. Uh, see, first first thing is I wouldn't give it to them. I just, I just press the button for them because I don't know how I'm going to explain to them to press the B button when I can't speak to the. To the <laughs> you have to press the A button again and say. Now press yeah, it. <laughs> but, but then, they, how are they going to know to press the B button? <laughs> yeah, okay, press it for them, or they could run off with it. But how ingenious. And I thought, wow, is this the first one of its kind? So I had a look, and it's not. There is, like, heaps on the market. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, um, they come on f- in phones as well as apps. Yeah. Really? I've had a guy come to work, and um, I think he was Chinese. Yeah. And he was typing in his... um language yeah and his phone was like and i would like <laughs> to purchase something <laughs> <laughs> you really? you yeah. yeah but the problem, yeah. problem was i think no. the translation between chinese and english there was like a bit of a gap like some words maybe have different meanings yeah, yeah. 
And every now I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but this one's even better because you just talk into it like da 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 da, and it's like da 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 da. Yeah, watch. Do you know what I mean? Ready? Hi Emma, I already had a poor mit mobile e dog. Wait. Oh, <gasps> did you hear it? Yes. yes. Something on my mobile today. Yes. Is that Google what? Translate? Yeah. I can't, what? I said hi. I said I am. I already have it on my mobile today. No. And then it said, "Hi Emma, I am the year you have on my mobile today." <laughs> Um, but that's because my pronunciation isn't very good. My oh, Norwegian pronunciation. I was going to say, is it like Siri where phone. you have to like say it like 20 times? Like, no, Siri, I said this. Like, that would be annoying. <laughs> the thing about Google, uh, Google Translate, is over time, it most likely will become the most efficient just because of the amount of data it collects. Yeah. It's yeah. coming straight out of Google. Yeah. So what is the Google app for it? I'm going to download Google Translate. That. Just Google Translate. What? And it's the same thing you talk into it? Yeah, you yeah, can type one it's talk. called... Picture, There's a camera, right. so if you go, if you have a menu, you can use your camera and it just translates everything no. on the page, like on the camera. There's you can write on it and then it will do it. Uh, there's conversation, so you you can talk and then it translates. Then you press a button and they talk and it translates back. Or there's voice, so if you're listening to something, you can just it's like conversation but longer form. So oh, there's already wow. lots of things like that. Do you know what's super interesting about um, Google Translate? I what? don't know if you knew this. No, is that when Google Google Translate, the AI is developing its own language, which makes it very easy to translate into any other language in the world. So now when you go into Google Translate and you type in an English sentence, it doesn't translate it straight to Norwegian. It translates it to it's their language, language <gasps> and then to Norwegian. Because that's their language, which we don't really understand, it can pick up context so much better. So it has so many more words than like wow. we would be used yeah. to using. But whilst which means that's in those words, it will just create a much better context, so and then it will translate to the other language. Yeah, so there'll be a universal easy. language but called Google. No, I was going to say that is fascinating, but really scary because now all these AIs are going to speak in that language, and then and no one, no one on earth is going to know what the hell they're talking about. Let's plan the demise. <laughs> do, you, do you know, Maxi? The AI. Like do that. I can't think of how to word it. Like by itself, or did they program it to do that? They programmed it to do that. Oh, okay. okay. But that's interesting. Do you reckon that there will be a universal language in the future? It's money. Well, so. What? Say what? I don't know. Money. Money talk. How is money going to be a universal language? It's a universal language. How? <laughs> how? Dev. <laughs> how? Sure. You go. Can I have this? Sure. Here's money. <laughs> money talks, mate. Anyways, Alexander, go. How? <laughs> yeah, it goes on. on. On YouTube, I can't remember his name, but I'll find it. You can put it in the description right there. But he, he did a video about learning languages, which is quite cool. He, he wanted to learn Italian. He did like in seven days, learned quite a lot. He already had Spanish. Seven so days. It, it, it seven days. That's it. two years, goddammit. That's, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> God, you're a slow learner. <laughs> It made it easier for him to learn because it's very similar in terms of the framework of the language. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. But what he said, and this is what's made me really want to learn Spanish, like I'm, I'm doing a lot more, and Maxi, you can probably speak on this because you're further along learning the language, but learning another language, it's not just about being able to communicate, but you can learn a lot more about perspective in the world and everything. Because even if you think like, take history, Every country doesn't teach history the same. So if you learn another language, you can learn a whole other perspective on history that you've never learned before. Or you just put so put into Google like uh, the Spanish version of the you I'm know what I'm happened bilingual. in the whatever <laughs> war, and it will tell you from their perspective what it was. Yeah, but then mm. um, what's the other one? so framework of how they put language together as well. So when you, when you look at the structuring of sentences and everything, and you learn how that's done and why it's done. It also apparently gives you another perspective as well. But I, I, more culturally, I don't know about this one because I don't speak another language fluently or anything. I don't know, Maxi, if you have. I, uh, I feel like there's a lot of points in that. One of them is like you have a new relationship with words because I feel like you start to realize words, like especially words which aren't like a, a noun, like a, when it's not a thing. You know, like the word like... Um, easily or something like yeah. those kind of words like what does that actually mean to you as a person when you learn like another language 
It, like there's words that they use which we don't have at all. I'm trying oh. to think of some like um course coarsely is one in Norwegian, like it just kind of means like a really nice feeling. Oh. Um, which we don't have the same word for in English, and it just shows like I don't know, it just makes you really think that like, you start to, like for me at least, as a very engineering number kind of guy, it made me start to really connect more with like how I feel about concepts. That makes sense? Huh. I don't like it's a, a interesting one, but especially like the the what's most interesting to me is to live outside of England, speaking a different language, and listening to the news. Like what they focus on, what they find funny, what they think is serious, is completely different. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you're just like, whoa! And that's just Norway. We're in like we're both in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if you go and learn like Iranian or Chinese, then you're like the level of perspective on the world is just. Ma- Maxi, wow. just uh, here's a here's a question. Um, the news. The news that you hear in different uh, countries. Uh, have you noticed a difference? You two, Alexander, in America compared to England. In Iceland. To yeah. Iceland. To, have you noticed a difference? I, American. Uh, but the thing, I, you can all probably have some sort of opinion on this because I'm sure you've seen American news on the internet and stuff because it all went viral. But America's news is way different to English news. Wow. <laughs> Like and what they what, report what about they, what and what do they focus so, on? Like American news is clearly propaganda. Like the, <laughs> uh, mo- look, all news organizations are owned by someone, so there's yeah. always going to be an agenda. Yeah. But in America, it's so painstakingly obvious, like thrown in your face. You're you're either watching the news of your party or you're watching the news of the opposition. No. Like, not, there's no just no news. Like, what are you going to get bipartisan news or anything like that? Wow. And what is it like in Norway? Yeah, uh, uh, they in Norway they try very hard to not be biased. Um, but obviously it happens. Just the interesting thing is like, it's just it's just funny to see like what was cons- like the way they describe British politics is very right wing compared to Norway. Oh. Like, one just as a whole. So when you're in England and you talk and you listen about politics, like you feel like we have the left side and the right side. But yeah, when you come to Norway, it's like it's all just right. Oh And America's wow. even worse. Like America's just like like the the Democrats the in America of- are so far right compared to the central parties in norway, norway. it's like pretty crazy you know That's so it's just insane. like and then uh, one thing i would say is in norway is they um they're very focused on like respecting their culture if that makes sense they're very focused on like there'd always be like some i don't know some farmer on the news talking about his land and um and then how to I mean it's just they just often talk about trying to be considerate to each other if that makes sense like it's like a more it just feels friendlier there are mm. bad things as well like obviously there's like anywhere but it just feels like there's more of a focus on that when I read about stuff yeah um and then anything anything which is like privatizing private privatize I can't say the word privatizing the, uh, privatizing like the railways and stuff like that's a big deal for them they're like no we want to keep control like yeah as the people you know so it's just slightly Politics wise, is what I notice. I don't really notice the rest of the news, but politics, it, you can see it. They try to be more inclusive than huh. what it is in the UK. Because, uh-huh. um, do you remember when I like uh, the Filipino, the Filipino news comes on, and mm. I always try to copy them. Mm. <laughs> it, it's everything is really like <laughs> with it's the Filipino stuff. It's so like entertaining. It is even the <laughs> serious stuff. It's entertaining. Just the way that they talk. Just the the the. Oh my God, in- no man. It's like it's full, in their voice. it's full on. It's full <laughs> on. It's like a. It's a serious. It's a serious. Someone's died, right? But then the the way they introduce it, it's like, oh shit! And what also, the hell's going on? This is even on their news. They'll throw in English words here and there. Yeah. It's like <laughs> a mix, you know. Yeah. So cool. that's actually kind of like um, I was thinking as well because Max mentioned it, like the way that they're expressing what's funny, what's serious, what's not, and like that news being entertaining. I guess with translators, you lose tone. Yeah. Like the yeah. Part of what's been said? Yeah. yeah. It's quite a significant part of language. Hello. My name is Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, translator. Are you being <laughs> the translator? <laughs> I mean, no, I, that's how I talk, Ed. <laughs> Hello, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> my name is. My name is Slim Shady. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you sound like Dr. Evil? <laughs> Slim Shady. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a word in Norwegian which is sefogri, which means uh, like of course. Oh. But uh, when I used it, I say it for everything. Like if someone's like, "Hey, Max, you can do this," I'm like, "Of course, like I can do that." Yeah. Um, but then I found out when I went to my Norwegian class, if you say that, that's like more of a patronizing, like 
Oh, of like, course I can do that. Of course. Like, what do you mean, <laughs> can I do that? Oh, no <laughs> way. <laughs> So, so even though it translates directly to a course, yeah, you can't like, use it in the God, same context. Maxie obviously. heads up his ass. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I am? But like, I was thinking about, it, but I said it in a good tone, didn't I? But if if that they only use that word for that reason, it might be yeah. even worse that I do it in such a nice tone, you know? <laughs> like, imagine if someone said, like, "Hey, Emma, can you send the email, please?" But like, well, w- what do you think? <laughs> That's kind of it's kind of that word instead. Do I mean like what do you what do you think? Do you think I can? I think I can. Yeah, yeah, I probably could. <laughs> but will I? That is so funny. Okay, so, um, you know how Trump has his. I guess beef with a lot of people. Is that Maccas? Did you guys see the Chrissy Teigen beef? Yes. With Trump. <laughs> How funny was that? So basically, I guess John Legend did an interview about criminal justice reform on a US news show. I don't know what show it was on or US program. Anyway, then Trump gets on his Twitter high horse and has a go at John Legend. Um, Maybe he was thinking that John was getting all the praise for him and he was basically calling him out saying he did nothing. Where was he when we were were doing everything? In the process called Chrissy Teigen a dirty mouthed wife (laughs) on his Twitter. (laughs) Yeah. And so, oh yeah, he didn't tag her. And then she was on the Ellen show and she was just breaking it down. And she obviously responded to Trump with some words that are a bit too... She called him a p- Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you Long go. Oh, I forgot one word. Tagged everyone but me. An honour, Mr. President. <laughs> yeah. Do, do any of you follow Chrissy Teigen on Twitter? No. no. She's, quite, she's quite open about, like, she, she says yeah. what she wants. Yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't care what people think. Like she says no. what she wants. Like I can say. No. The thing is, is her responding like that doesn't really do anything because all it's going to do is it's going to strengthen everyone who believes Trump because she's done exactly what he said by being yeah. dirty mouthed. Yeah. And then anyone who likes her, it's going to continue to like her. Like it was just just a really. It, it almost weakened her position. I don't think I don't see her position as being weakened. I'm just like, yeah. No, but if you like go her, you. you won't. But if you if you don't have an opinion of her, or you, or if you didn't her, have an opinion, you're probably going to dislike her after this. Like you only really only Trump. if you like Trump. Only if you but like even him. If you, have, if you have if you don't know who she is, imagine you don't know who she is at all. Yeah, but the fact dirty mouth wife, and then she responds with that, you're going to go. Oh, yeah, she's a pretty dirty mouthful, But don't, don't you think don't you think more people are now heard about her on this on the people that are opposed to Trump now more people that never heard about it before that don't like Trump are now on her side? Yeah, because they're like, oh wow, she's like hit back at him. She didn't just. Like, but obviously, take so she might have more haters and more likers followers now. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, so her profile can go up because she's the one that just called the president of the United States. A <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest with you, <laughs> he is. <laughs> <laughs> that is so it's, funny. Uh, I just. Uh, I mean, I, that's one to tell the grandkids. But I don't know any leader. I don't know any leader or any oh CEO. I don't know anyone that like Acts constantly that goes does. on Twitter and and does this. I, I don't understand. Like, if we as in, like if I was uh, an employee uh, as an employee, if I started saying stuff, you get fired. I'm getting fired. <laughs> I'm getting fired. <laughs> this guy constantly goes on there and then just goes, "I'm untouchable." <laughs> I can do whatever you I want. Know, um, He's going to end up in prison. Penn and Teller, the magicians? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, Penn, were the <laughs> magicians, one of them's tall with a ponytail, the other one's short, yep. but doesn't talk. Yeah. Emma? Anyway. No. Um, yeah, you know him. You know him. Penn, Penn went on Joe Rogan and they were talking about it because Penn was on um, the, the Apprentice with Donald Trump. Yeah. Um, and he said the whole thing was such a strange experience because you know how... This whole thing with like Trump now, if anyone says anything, like he has to clap back at them. Um, yeah. On set, like he, that was all he cared about was people giving him, like paying him compliments or anything like that. 
Like he he would hold on to absolutely anything that anyone said about him. Like he ca- he cannot let it go. Like that's what Penn was. And Penn, by the sounds of it, kind of likes the guy. And he was still saying like that. Like it was the mm. most absurd interactions. Like he mm-hmm. and also he said that he's he doesn't think he's ever genuinely laughed. Like at no point did he find anything La? funny. Who didn't find things funny? Like Trump. And he said whenever Trump laughed, like it was clearly a disingenuous laugh. Like he's he said he doesn't. He thinks the guy is just constantly looking for people to give him affirmations. Like that's all he cares about. The orange man. Oh my god. The orange man. Um, I can't believe you blamed the light bulb for him being orange. Even Forbes <laughs> have put out. I'm just going for it now. Even Forbes put out ten, uh, <laughs> ten most offensive tweets that Trump has said. They um, narrowed it down to ten. That's impressive. Every poll has me winning big. If you listen to Dopey Carl, if you listen to Dopey Carl Rove, a Trump hater, you'd think I'm go I'm doing poorly. I don't know what that means, but yeah, he's, he's just bizarre. I feel like the next president, no matter who it when, is, when he, when he ends up a prison, he'll be sitting on a few polls. People, he's just going to be <laughs> seem so like boring to a lot of people because he's probably not going to be on his Twitter every night. Was he? Is he? Ne- was he necessary? No. Who? Was he necessary for so. this period? He was necessary. I think necessary. he probably was necessary, but yeah, and was I think. Was he necessary? Trump. <coughs> what do you mean, was he necessary? Just to shake things up and make people realize that we actually need a proper leader. Yeah. I, to be fair, I think it's more necessary to show that having a single person running a government is a stupid idea. Mate. Off the back of a popularity contest. Yeah, but I he's not he's I not a single person running it. He's he's just the No, he's not doing anything. He's just on Twitter trying to get compliments. He is doing a, he's doing a lot. To think that he's not doing anything is kind of sort of brushing things under the carpet. He's having a, he's had a massive influence politically. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know because I don't know how things run, but I know they don't tell him a lot. Because he no. I don't know if you know so they came out the stat the other day, he's had more turnover in his um, administration than any other president in the first term ever and he's only he's not even three years in it he's not completely what? three years that's crazy well, turnover what? means turnover like of staff in his administration like he's fired oh, turnover people. staff and they've gone wasn't it, didn't he did we talk about this the other week where he said something like oh <laughs> like he was going like oh i'm just this is costing me millions to, to oh, be yeah. president like so like Oh, this job! Like he was like, "What did he say?" Uh, uh, did, um, he, this job is costing him money, and oh, uh, because <laughs> it was Trevor but, but, Noah that was making yeah, fun of how he but said. But then it. they've done some things, like he, some of his hotels have actually were losing money before he was president, and are now making money because he keeps sending people to those hotels. Oh, yeah, I don't know. He holds, That's he, holds lo- he holds loads of stuff. Like look, Mar-a-Lago in Florida, he always holds conferences there and all that kind of stuff. So like he has um, what's the next the next uh, G whatever it is. Q. I never G- remember. G- 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 Surely G- there's G- a conf- com- G- conflict G- of interest. Oh yeah, there is, but he don't care. <laughs> he's gone, no, there's not. He's there's going not. to prison. There's not. There's there's nothing. Uh, there's no like conflict of interest clause in the presidency that says like you can't. Help your own businesses. Oh, There's wow. nothing that says that. No, because he's, wow. he's, he's sent. <laughs> he, he sent. Yeah, but that's like that's the point that this what are they call the Democrats, like the new, very progressive. What's and I can't remember her name, but it's like she does a very good example. The, the good looking girl and says Elizabeth Warren. And Cortez. Cortez. Yeah, Cortez. Yeah, the choice. Yeah, she does an one. amazing speech where she just basically says like, "Let's pretend I'm the president. If I like do this, like if I um." Um, take like millions or billions of pounds from pharmaceutical companies. Am I allowed to be the one to decide on the laws for those pharmaceutical companies? They're like, yes, you are. And then she said, okay, then if I do this and do this, and then like there's loads of them which says like about how can I use the presidency to help me make money? And they're like, yes, you can. And she wow. goes, so theoretically, do you think this this any of this could have happened with our current president? They're like, they go quiet kind of thing like that. But oh, it's wow. possible, you know. Oh wow, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Like he said. Um, wait, wait, wait. So that's the president, but how about if if you're a what? What is she? What was it? Congress, a senator, a senator. Or Can they do that? Can they make yeah. money from their businesses, or are they would they be in trouble? Yeah, no, I think they could. I don't know. I'm guessing. I think they could. They can, <sighs> of course, they can. That's why they all get paid off. Oh, okay. Mm, interesting. Because because there was that's, um, that's the whole it, premise on on politics, and that's why it's like this. 
because it's it's a paid job. Like you have a salary, plus businesses pay you money because you're in charge of lawmaking. So because they want control in, and they want influence. In, on in Sydney, in Sydney, there's a there's a senator that's in trouble because he bought yeah, but, a house. But Is that, that different? But that's here, not there. No, no, that's what I'm saying. In in here, it, yeah. you can't do that. No. All right, you can't. A guy um, had some. You, you know, he could the shops. Yeah. He gave a few shops to family members yep. in the city for them to run because he had control of them. Yeah. From the council, he's in jail. Mm. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense that you can. That's like, what he do said. Stuff. He goes, "Oh, this thing is costing me money," and Trevor Noah was like, "He just called the presidency job a thing. This thing." <laughs> 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 and it's, it's actually making money for the first time in years. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the B Side Word. Make sure if you enjoyed it to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe and drop us your thoughts in the comments down below. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Hit the, hit the, hit the bell. The, hit, hit the, the bell. bell.